People are not born evil. Whether someone turns out good or bad largely depends on how they manage their own ego. Additionally, it is influenced by the surrounding environment. Many individuals are inherently good, but may find themselves in trouble due to a moment of impulsiveness or lack of thought, leading to irreversible mistakes. Watch today's video to see how the case I'm about to share relates to this issue. Welcome to the Crime Documentary Files channel. At around 7 a.m. on May 2, 2011, Mrs. Cheng, the mother of Zhu Zixiong, the local tax bureau chief of District 8 in Hezhou City, Guangxi Province, China, went to invite her son's family to a wedding banquet at a restaurant. Upon arrival, Mrs. Cheng stood outside ringing the doorbell for a long time, but no one answered. She then called her son, Zhu Zixiong, but although the phone rang, there was no response. She tried calling the landline, but again, no one answered. Mrs. Cheng assumed that the family had stayed up late the previous night and was sleeping in, so she decided to go ahead, confident that her son's family would follow later. Surprisingly, only the housekeeper, Little Wang, showed up, and there was still no sign of Zhu Zixiong's family. As all the guests took their seats, Mrs. Cheng grew uneasy and approached the housekeeper to inquire. Little Wang explained that she had slept in an upstairs room the previous night. This morning, when she went downstairs, she noticed the curtains on the fourth floor were still drawn. She knocked on the door but heard no response. Assuming the family had already left for the banquet, Wang also headed out. Hearing this, Mrs. Chung became extremely anxious and called her son again, but still received no answer. As the wedding reception was about to end, and still with no sign of her son's family, Mrs. Chung grew increasingly worried. She immediately took a taxi with Wang to check on the situation at home. The house was eerily quiet. Negative thoughts began to flood Mrs. Cheng's mind as she urged the housekeeper to quickly open the door. Once inside, Mrs. Cheng rushed to the fourth floor. She found the door slightly ajar and pushed it open, only to see her son lying motionless on the bed, covered in blood. Overcome with fear, Mrs. Cheng screamed and then collapsed from a heart attack. Hearing the commotion, Little Wang rushed upstairs. The scene left her in shock. Struggling to stay calm, she helped Mrs. Cheng and called the police and an ambulance. Her voice trembled as she spoke to the authorities. The police reassured her and asked for details. They learned from the housekeeper that a murder had occurred at Zhu Zixiong's residence. Recognizing the severity of the case involving a government official, the police quickly dispatched a five-member investigation team to Zhu Zixiong's home. When the investigation team arrived, medical personnel had already placed Mrs. Cheng, Zhu Zixiong's mother, in an ambulance to be taken to the hospital. The crime scene was identified as two rooms on the fourth floor of the villa. Upon entering the scene, all the investigators were shocked by what they saw. The police immediately set up a barrier to seal off the entrance to Zhu Zixiong's home. Both Mr. and Mrs. Zixiong were found dead in the bedroom on the fourth floor. Zhu Zixiong had two deep wounds one on his neck and another on his abdomen. The once relatively new white tank top he was wearing was now soaked with blood. His head remained on the pillow, indicating that he had been attacked and killed while still asleep, without any chance to defend himself. Based on the depth of the wounds, the police determined that the murder weapon was likely a dagger or a folding knife with a blade about 20 cm long. His wife, Ling Xiaoyun, was found dead in a corner of the room. She had been attacked on the head and chest. The head wound was likely caused by a blunt object, possibly a hammer. The assailant had struck her with such force that her head was crushed and bleeding, with most injuries concentrated around her face. The brutal nature of the attack suggested a deep-seated hatred towards Mrs. Xiaoyun. Her neck bore strangulation marks, but the cause of death was determined to be from multiple traumas and acute blood loss. These details indicated that Mrs. Xiaoyun may have been tortured before being killed. According to the police, Mr. Zixiong was attacked first, and Mrs. Xiaoyun, who was lying beside him, woke up and tried to flee but was caught by the assailant. She was strangled and subdued before being killed. The police concluded that the open wounds on both Mr. Zixiong and Mrs. Xiaoyun were caused by the same weapon. However, a different weapon was used for the head wound on Mrs. Xiaoyun. 
The investigation team thoroughly examined the couple's room. There were no signs of a struggle. A large amount of cash and jade necklaces in the drawer were untouched. The safe beside the bed was also undisturbed. Under the dressing table, the police found a photo frame with shattered glass and no picture inside. In the hallway trash bin, they found a crumpled photograph of Ling Xiaoyun, which likely came from the broken frame. In the second room, two more victims, a male and a female, were found dead on the bed. The victims were identified as Zhu Xue and Zhu Zhonglin, the children of Mr. Zixiong and Mrs. Xiaoyun. Zhu Xue and Zhu Zhonglin had deep wounds on their left chests. Their legs were straight, the bed sheets were not rumpled, and there were no signs of struggle. Upon inspection, the police discovered that the weapons used to kill Xue and Zhonglin were different. Considering this, the police proposed two possibilities. First, the murderer might have used two weapons simultaneously, attacking Zhue and Zhonglin to minimize noise and prevent one from realizing the other was being attacked. Second, there could have been two murderers, each armed with a weapon, attacking one victim each. The latter theory gained more support, suggesting the involvement of two assailants. This was because the weapons used to attack Ling Xiaoyun included both a sharp and a blunt object, indicating the possibility of two people attacking her. Zhu Xue and Zhu Zhonglin's bedroom was tidy, with no signs of a struggle. No foreign fingerprints were found at either crime scene. This led to two possibilities. Either the perpetrator wore gloves during the crime, or they meticulously cleaned the scene afterward to avoid detection. Zhu Zixiong's villa was quite large, spanning seven floors. The first floor was spacious and rented out for storage. Except for the fourth and fifth floors, which were in use, the second, third, and sixth floors were unoccupied. The fourth floor was where Zhu Zixiong's family lived, while the fifth floor housed Mrs. Cheng and the housekeeper, Wang. Occasionally, Wang would rest on the fourth floor to prepare breakfast for the Zhu family in the morning. The villa was built very securely, with high walls topped with barbed wire, and there were no shoe prints around the perimeter. The door showed no signs of forced entry, suggesting there had been no break-in. Based on these details, the police suspected that the perpetrator might have been someone familiar to the family, who was either let in by a family member or had a key to the house. Since all the valuables in the house were untouched, the investigators ruled out robbery as the motive. It was more likely an act of revenge targeting either Mr. Zixiong or Mrs. Xiaoyun. Without useful clues and with surveillance systems not yet widespread at the time, the police faced significant challenges in solving the case. As a result, they offered a reward of 50,000 yuan to encourage the public to provide any information or leads related to the case. The investigation revealed that Zhu Zixiong, 44, was the director of the local tax bureau branch in District 8, Heizhou City, Guangxi Province. He was described by colleagues and subordinates as a gentle person. His wife, Ling Xiaoyun, 44, was a businesswoman involved in various industries, including cement sales and real estate development. Given their significant business dealings, their social network was relatively complex. Zhu Zixiong and Ling Xiaoyun had a 14-year-old daughter, Zhu Xue, and a 15-year-old son, Zhu Zhonglin, both attending a local school. The children were well-behaved, had good academic records, and were liked by their teachers and peers. As the investigation team worked tirelessly to uncover the truth behind the horrific massacre, the residents of Heizhou City began to form their own theories. Some believed that Zhu Zixiong had embezzled public funds with accomplices, leading to a fallout and retribution. Others suspected that Mr. Zixiong had created conflicts and enmities during his work, resulting in this tragic outcome. However, the investigation revealed that Zhu Zixiong worked in a small town with limited power and only six subordinates. His income was modest, with most of the family's finances coming from Mrs. Xiaoyun's business ventures. Zhu Zixiong was not involved in embezzlement or bribery, and did not have any deep-seated grudges as rumored. Initially, the investigation team focused on the sole survivor of the massacre, the housekeeper, Little Wang. They conducted intense interrogations, but Little Wang continually wept. It was discovered that Little Wang was a cousin of Mr. Zixiong and had been supported by his family due to her difficult circumstances and lack of a husband. 
She had worked there for many years, living rent-free and earning a salary, leading a relatively comfortable life. Neighbors described Wang as kind, honest, and well-mannered. Given her physical disability and difficulty moving, the police determined that she had a low motive and capability for committing the crime, thus ruling her out as a suspect. The investigation team then delved deeper into the victim's social relationships through Ling Xiaoyun's sister, Ling Xiaohua. She revealed that her brother-in-law was not a good person. Despite being married to her sister for a long time, he continued to secretly see his ex-girlfriend. This situation caused Ling Xiaoyun to consider ending her life multiple times. There had been conflicts and arguments between Zhu Zichiong and his ex-girlfriend's husband. Ling Xiaoyun's social relationships were also complicated. She had been previously married but divorced her first husband, Xiao Guang, when the relationship soured. Despite Xiao Guang's attempts to reconcile, Ling Xiaoyun eventually remarried Zhu Zichiong and had two children. Recently, Xiao Guang had approached Xiao Yun, asking her to leave her current husband and return to him. Knowing that Zhu Zichiong was unfaithful, Xiao Yun felt somewhat sympathetic and often met with her ex-husband. Both Zixiong and Xiao Yun had extramarital relationships, leading to frequent conflicts and disagreements. According to housekeeper Little Wang, the couple argued every few days. Little Wang occasionally overheard their arguments. Zixiong disliked Xiao Yun's habit of going out for social drinks in the evenings, while Xiao Yun resented her husband's ongoing relationship with his ex-girlfriend. Based on the testimonies of Little Wang and Ling Xiaohua, the investigation team identified two primary suspects. First, Xiao Yun's ex-husband, Xiao Guang, and second, Zhang Shujian, the husband of Zixiong's ex-girlfriend. With additional manpower, the team split into three groups one to continue searching for clues and analyzing the crime scene, a second to visit Xiao Guang's residence, and a third to investigate Zhang Shujian. Xiao Guang, 45, currently worked as a taxi driver in Heizhou City. When the police arrived at his home, he was surprised and unaware of the reason for their visit. After being informed of Ling Xiaoyun's murder, Xiao Guang was shocked and claimed he had no knowledge of the incident. During the subsequent conversation, the investigation team did not mention that Xiao Yun's husband and children were also dead, but Guang eagerly discussed their deaths. This raised suspicion that Guang was trying to act innocent, but inadvertently revealed his knowledge. When the investigators pressed Guang, he admitted to lying. In fact, he was aware of the massacre at his ex-wife's home, but pretended otherwise to avoid trouble. When asked about his whereabouts at around 1 a.m. on May 2nd, Xiao Guang stated that he had been driving a regular customer to District 8, Hezhu City. Since this location was close to Zhu Zichong's house, the police were highly suspicious. However, Xiao Guang voluntarily provided the dashcam footage from that night, which ultimately confirmed his alibi. The second investigation team visited the home of Zhu Zichong's ex-girlfriend and discovered that Zhang Shujian and his wife had left for Yunnan at 4.30 a.m. on May 2nd. Why would he leave for Yunnan so early in the morning? Could he have committed the crime and fled with his family? Wondered one investigator. The team then questioned the neighbors about Zhang Shujian's recent behavior and social relationships. Neighbors described Zhang Shujian as an idle gambler, while his wife, Du Yan, was a housewife. Their economic situation was poor, and the couple frequently argued about money and their children. Despite being married, Du Yan's attractive appearance attracted attention from many men. Recently, some people had seen Zhu Zichong and Du Yan together in a car, acting very intimate. Based on this information, the police suspected that Zhang Shujian might have discovered his wife's affair and planned to kill Zhu Zichong's family in revenge. However, further information revealed that on the night of May 1st and the early hours of May 2nd, Zhang Shujian and his wife were at the hospital caring for his mother. At 4.30 a.m. on May 2nd, his mother's condition worsened, and she had to be transferred to another facility, with Zhang Shujian and Du Yan accompanying her. Both primary suspects had alibis, leaving the investigation team with no choice but to return to the crime scene to discuss new strategies. While searching for clues in the villa, the police found Ling Xiaoyun's ledger in a cabinet, 
the ledger meticulously recorded daily transactions. Based on this, the police investigated over 10 people who had borrowed money from the victim's family, but found no suspects. As the case reached a dead end, Ling Xiaoyun's sister, Ling Xiaohua, revealed that her husband, Li Lang, had a financial dispute with her sister. My husband worked for my sister, basically supervising the construction site, Ling Xiaohua complained. But in reality, he was more like a servant, never getting any rest. He asked for a raise several times, but was always denied. From Xiaohua's information, the police learned that Li Lang had previously worked at a passenger transport center. He then left that job to work for Ling Xiaoyun, who had promised him a monthly salary of 2,000 yuan, approximately 275 USD, with room and board. However, Li Lang only received 1,500 yuan per month and was provided meals but no accommodation. This discrepancy led the police to suspect that Li Lang could be the perpetrator. However, during the investigation, Li Lang provided evidence proving his innocence. Once again, the leads went cold, and the investigation seemed to be at a standstill. The residents of Hezu City grew increasingly anxious, not knowing who the true killer was or why they had so brutally murdered the family. People feared they might be the next target. These concerns, along with mounting criticism, put immense pressure on the investigation team to solve this severe case quickly. On May 8, 2011, Hezu City Police increased the reward from 50,000 yuan to 200,000 yuan, equivalent to $27,500 USD. Despite receiving 80 to 90 calls daily, none had been helpful for the investigation. The investigation team decided to re-examine the crime scene. This time, they made a crucial discovery. They found a sock print in the dust on the floor of an empty room on the sixth floor, and a slipper print at the crime scene on the fourth floor. Analysis revealed that the sock print on the sixth floor belonged to a man approximately 1.6 meters tall, while the slipper print on the fourth floor was partial and belonged to a woman. Based on this, the police speculated that after committing the crime, the perpetrator wiped away fingerprints and shoe prints, but failed to completely clean the slipper print. The slipper, identified by Mrs. Cheng and housekeeper Wang, was an indoor slipper that Wang had placed by the door, size 37, but it was now missing. From this information, the investigators deduced that there were at least one male and one female suspect. The male was about 1.65 meters tall, and the female was under 1.6 meters tall. They had a key to the Zhu family's house and were familiar with the victims. The suspects had premeditated the crime, sneaked into the house late at night, and calmly cleaned the crime scene, erasing fingerprints from door handles and stair railings. The police then investigated the whereabouts of the house keys. The seven-story house had the first floor rented out for storage, and the second, third, sixth, and seventh floors were unoccupied. The Zhu family lived on the fourth floor, while housekeeper Little Wang and Mrs. Cheng stayed on the fifth floor. To enter the Zhu family's bedroom, the perpetrator needed a key to the house and the fourth floor. Thus, the murderer had a full set of Zhu family keys. The family had five sets of keys, one for each of the couple, one for Mrs. Cheng, one shared by the two children, and a spare set kept hidden. After the incident, all five sets of keys were found, indicating that the perpetrator had made a duplicate key. The police launched an investigation into the relatives and friends of the Zhu family who might have had access to the keys. Ten days after the murder, Mrs. Cheng, who had been bedridden with grief, started to recover. She remembered that a few months prior, she had stayed at her daughter's house for a while and was given the keys. Feeling uncomfortable, she returned to her old home with her daughter Ling Xiaohua after a few days. She gave the keys to Xiaohua to return, meaning Xiaohua had held the keys and had the opportunity to duplicate them. With this new lead, the police focused on Ling Xiaohua, noting that she was about 1.6 meters tall and wore size 37 shoes, matching the description of the female suspect. Investigating secretly, they found that Ling Xiaohua had called her sister the day before the murder and had made multiple calls to a young man named Liu Shengming between 8 p.m. and 2 to 3 a.m. on the night of the crime. Further investigation revealed that Liu Shengming was the boyfriend of Su Jie, Xiaohua's niece. Along with Xiaohua's suspicious actions, 
Sheng Ming matched the description of the male suspect at the crime scene. Neighbors reported that Su Ji's brother, Su Kajang, who had a limp, was seen near the victim's house on the night of the murder. He often visited his aunt Xiaoyun, making him memorable to the neighbors. Suspecting their involvement, the police planned to apprehend Su Jie and Sheng Ming. However, just as they prepared to arrest them, Su Jie and Sheng Ming fled Heizhou City. The investigation team tracked them as they traveled from Fuxuan to Yangzhou City, Hunan, then to Zhejiang, and finally to Dongguan City, Guangdong Province. It seemed they were trying to escape, continuously moving across various cities. On May 18, 2011, the police apprehended suspects Ling Xiaohua, Su Kejiang, Su Jie, and Liu Shengming. After evading capture, the four were finally arrested at a hotel in Guangdong province. Faced with intense interrogation, Su Jie broke down in tears and fearfully confessed. She admitted that Ling Xiaohua had given her the keys to Ling Xiaoyun's house to make duplicates. A year ago, Ling Xiaohua had already begun plotting to murder her sister's family. Despite Su Ji's attempts to dissuade her, she couldn't prevent Ling Xiaohua from carrying out her plan. This time, Ling Xiaohua hid her intentions from Su Ji and convinced her boyfriend Liu Shengming to commit the crime together. After hours of denial, Ling Xiaohua finally admitted that Su Ji's account was accurate. Ling Xiaohua confessed that she had harbored deep resentment towards her sister for a long time. She wanted to kill Ling Xiaoyun's entire family so that her mother would inherit the family assets, which she then planned to manipulate for her own gain. Her confession left all the investigators present in shock. Born in 1975 into a modest farming family in Heizhou City, Guangxi Province, Ling Xiaohua was one of five siblings. Xiaoyun was the third child, with an older sister and brother and two younger siblings. Due to financial hardships, none of the five siblings could continue their education for long. The daughters married soon after leaving school. Ling Xiaohua, petite and charming with a talent for conversation, married well. Her husband indulged her every desire, allowing Xiaohua to regularly send money to her parents. At the same time, her second sister, Xiao Yun, struggled with a difficult marriage and financial instability. Xiao Hua's first husband was a traffic cop responsible for managing office seals, which made her feel proud. Back then, my brother-in-law often needed help and frequently borrowed money from my husband, Xiao Hua recounted. I felt like a queen at my parents' home. Shortly after, Ling Xiaoyun divorced, left penniless and jobless. Feeling pity for her sister, Xiao Hua requested money from her husband to support Xiao Yun and wholeheartedly helped her start a business. With determination and skill, Ling Xiao Yun successfully launched her business, largely thanks to her family's support, especially from her sister Ling Xiao Hua. Later, Xiao Yun met and remarried Zhu Zixiong, the director of the local tax bureau. Together, they built a happy home with two children, and their business flourished improving their financial status. Just when it seemed the sisters had both achieved their desired lives, Xiao Hua's marriage fell apart. She left her husband with nothing. Ling Xiao Hua then married Li Hao, an ordinary employee at a transport company. Li Hao was kind but timid and incompetent, with a limited earning capacity. From this point, Xiao Yun replaced Xiao Hua's position of prestige. Once living in luxury, admired by everyone, Xiaohua suddenly lost everything, leaving her deeply dissatisfied and disheartened. Her pain was exacerbated by the fact that she had always been considered the smartest and most beloved among her siblings, but now, her second sister Xiao Yun had taken that place. Xiao Yun's success grew. She built a mansion, bought luxury cars, developed real estate, and provided jobs for many relatives, earning everyone's respect and dependence. Xiao Yun was now the revered family member, while Xiao Hua felt like nothing more than a puppet. Ling Xiao Yun had borrowed more than 400,000 yuan, approximately $55,000 USD, from Xiao Hua to finance her business operations. As a result, Xiao Hua believed that her sister's business success was due to her help and felt she deserved a share of the profits. Xiao Hua had approached Xiao Yun several times about this issue, but was always dismissed. 
she felt that her sister, who had become successful with her help, was now ungrateful and disdainful, refusing to share any profits. This sense of betrayal and resentment grew stronger over time. Their eldest sister, Ling Xiaoping, suffered from diabetes and heart disease. As her condition worsened, Xiao Hua frequently visited and cared for her, while Xiao Yun rarely appeared, only covering part of the medical expenses. Xiao Hua was discontented, believing Xiao Yun was stingy and heartless, unwilling to fully support their struggling family. On the night of May 1st, Ling Xiaohua called Ling Xiaoyun to borrow money again. Perhaps because she had borrowed too many times, Xiaoyun refused with an irritated tone. Ling Xiaoyun shouted over the phone, Useless! Why don't you use your brain to think of a way to get rich? Stop relying on others just because they're wealthy. I've given you enough. I won't lend you another penny. These words felt like a slap in the face, deeply wounding Xiaohua. She felt like a beggar, her rage exploding, and she decided to exact revenge on her ungrateful sister. That night, Ling Xiaohua called Su Kezhang and Liu Shengming, promising that once the plan succeeded, she would take 200,000 yuan from her mother's inheritance and split it with them. Tempted by greed, Shengming and Su Kezhang immediately agreed. Late on the night of May 1st, 2011, this group used the key to sneak into Zhu Zixiang's house and brutally murdered the four members of Zixiang's family on the fourth floor. The killers first targeted Zhu Zixiang's two children, then Zixiang and Xiaoyun. Ling Xiaoyun suffered the longest and died last. Their swift and simultaneous actions prevented any noise. They used duct tape to silence Ling Xiaoyun, rendering her unable to scream for help. Ling Xiaohua's initial plan was to kill her mother as well, so the inheritance would be transferred to her. However, that night Mrs. Cheng was at the hospital caring for her eldest daughter, Ling Xiaoping, and was not at home. After committing the murders, the group wiped away fingerprints and bloodstains, but failed to clean everything completely, leaving evidence that incriminated them. Ling Xiaohua, Su Kezhang, and Liu Shengming were sentenced to death in the first trial. They appealed, and Ling Xiaohua requested a psychiatric evaluation. She repeatedly emphasized that her motive was not money, but the emotional betrayal by her sister. On April 1, 2012, the court rejected the appeals of Ling Xiaohua and her accomplices. Upon verification, the court found that Ling Xiaohua and her family had no history of mental illness and were fully capable of civil conduct when the crime was committed. Therefore, her request for a psychiatric forensic evaluation was also denied. The death sentences were carried out in January 2013. In this case, Ling Xiaohua cruelly, along with her accomplices, murdered her sister's entire family out of impulsive thoughts. Xiaohua's actions brought immense misfortune not only to the victims but also to herself and her own family. Both Xiaoyun and Xiaohua had their faults, one was overly focused on money and was stingy, while the other had extreme tendencies and harbored jealousy, leading both into a tragic downfall. As for Xiaohua's accomplices, their moral integrity was overshadowed by material greed, and they ultimately paid a high price for their heinous actions. What do you think about today's case? Please comment below and let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Crime Documentary Files to hear more about extraordinary cases from around the world.